Yeah, hey Dan. Hey, it's John. Um, yeah, no, I'm I'm good, thanks, mate. Um, yeah, look, I've I've lost another one. Yeah, I know they're expensive. Yeah, I, yeah, I know we got to. I know we got to find a way to pay for these desk devices. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll talk soon then. Okay. Bye. Right, that's enough of that silliness. How's it going, Internet? John from Zebra Technologies here, and if you couldn't tell from my amateur theatrics just now, I'm a little bit excited about this one. It's not often that I get the opportunity to talk about something completely new and game-changing, but that's exactly what I'm here for today. Lost devices are a major problem for many customers, and unfortunately, it's a problem that scales with fleet size. It's really not uncommon for me to hear customers say that they lose as much as 10% of their fleet of devices every year. Not damaged, not broken, lost. No longer within that organization, just gone. And that's a problem, not just because of the capital cost of replacing these devices, but also the interruption to business that the replacement entails. The effective downtime as you try to manage with fewer devices than you need until you can get those replacements in. Sometimes it's malicious. Users just causing trouble or trying to keep their favorite device in the locker over the weekend. Sometimes it's accidental. More often than not, it's actually accidental. You know, I've had parcel delivery customers lose devices only to have them appear in a different suburb or a different state. I've had aviation customers have devices show up in entirely different countries, and they're just the ones that we know about. And in retail and supply chain, this kind of thing happens a lot more often than you'd think. No matter the reason though, the fact that it happens at all is a problem. So isn't it past time that we came up with a solution? Today, I'm gonna to talk about a new cloud-based application from Zebra Technologies to help staff members quickly and easily locate missing devices within the four walls with no need for any additional infrastructure. Today, I'm going to talk about the brand new release of Zebra Technologies Device Tracker. We'll start with some housekeeping because Device Tracker has been with us for a little while in concept. If you head on over to the Zebra support portal, you can download Device Tracker on premise. It's a local server-based version of the cloud-based solution I'm gonna run through in more detail shortly. Device Tracker on-prem is perfect if we have a few sites or a limited fleet of devices. Functionally, it behaves very similarly to the cloud version from a management and a device tracking perspective, but the new cloud version is infinitely more scalable and offers a significantly improved user experience for IT admins, site managers, and even end users. And it includes some much requested pluggability and a few extra features to boot. With that out of the way, Device Tracker is a cloud-based data aggregation service where the data we're aggregating is pretty much just access point and battery information. It's a deceptively simple solution. The Device Tracker server keeps a real-time record of the most recently connected access point for any given device, which lets you start to look for a lost unit in the last place it was seen on the network. Or as my mum would say, where did you last use it, John? Setting up the solution couldn't be easier. Once the Zebra security team sets up your admin account, you create a list of your sites and all of the access points inside of them. Then you give each of those access points a name that's gonna mean something to an end user. Something like aisle six, dock door three, upper mezzanine, or in my case, kitchen or garage. Allocating these friendly names is hugely important as a user has no idea where 00AO F3B7 23A8 is, but I know where the kitchen is. The real magic of the solution though comes into play once a user has arrived in the kitchen to look for that missing device. Once there, I can use the device tracker application on any other device in service to start looking metal detector style for the missing unit. So let's have a look at how this all hangs together. From a setup perspective, this is the completely official Zebra secret bunker, AKA my home office. I've got three access points in my house, one in my kitchen, one in my hallway, and one in the garage. Now. Kitchen and garage are nice, concise names, but hallway can be open to interpretation. Since the access point is in the hallway near my office, 
we're gonna go ahead and call it office instead. Remember, the names don't have to be entirely accurate. They just need to be descriptive enough to help a user find that start point in their search. And boom, that's the site setup done. Now to allocate my devices of which I have three, two TC57s and one TC52. You do need to allocate your devices to a site, otherwise they'll just show up in an unallocated devices list. You don't have to give your devices friendly names though. This step is entirely optional. And if you don't wanna name your devices, you can just leave this bit blank. Once I've uploaded these two files to my server instance, we're online and ready to go. The user interface is pretty intuitive. In fact, this is the manager slash admin view. We've got the option to have a much simplified user interface that only shows a list of devices that need to be found. Or we can enable this global manager view across all devices, basically allowing more users to perform more advanced functionality without needing to log into anything. You can see here that I can see all other devices currently in service at my site, as well as their battery status and whether or not they're on charge or discharging. This is really handy as it allows us to proactively seek out devices that haven't been returned at the end of a shift. Rather than click through the whole user interface though, let's just focus on the cool stuff. How do I find a missing device? Well, first off, we need to mark a device as missing in the system. So let's say someone has gone and lost my TC52. In Device Tracker, as long as I have access to that management view, I can simply select the device and mark it as to be found. This immediately tells all other devices at my site that we've got a device to look for. So I can grab any other device, bring up my list of devices to be found and select the one I wanna look for. And you'll notice here, this tells the system that someone's looking for that device. So there's no duplication of effort. I can see that the device was last connected to my network in the kitchen. So that's where I'll start looking. Remember again, this isn't perfectly accurate, but it is a perfect start point. Once I'm at the last known location, I can start using the Bluetooth low energy radio in both devices to start honing in on the missing one. And if it's up on racking or hidden in a cupboard somewhere, I can press the play sound button to play an alert noise on my lost device. And once I've found that missing unit, I mark it as found and then a site manager can mark it as back in service and add a note if required. Now, finding missing devices is all well and good, but wouldn't it be great if we could stop them going missing at all in the first place? Device Tracker can help with that too. One of the major challenges in managing a shared fleet of devices is knowing who the last person to have any device was. Honestly, my best in class customers still manage this with a clipboard and a pencil. And most everyone else tends to rely on the good old honesty system and we all know how reliable that can be when a user accidentally puts something through the box crusher. Now, one of our options in Device Tracker is to enable a device checkout feature. This is a feature that is getting a lot of focus in our roadmap. As it stands today, it allows us to very easily add some user accountability to our fleet management. When a device is on charge, Device Tracker will take over the screen, preventing access to any other apps or functionality on that unit until a user signs in. Today, that's by scanning a barcode for ease of use. You can see here, once someone signs into a device, the system immediately updates with an entry of just who took that unit out. And to keep the workflow nice and easy for end users, to sign out of a device, you simply put it back on charge. And that's Device Tracker in a nutshell. Super easy to implement, super easy to configure, super easy to use and with a really exciting roadmap of additional features that we're executing on. If you'd like to know more, your friendly local Zebra can help with more information. And that's all I've got for today. So thanks for watching. Keep on being excellent and I'll catch you all in the next video.